This is Colton, nice guy, professing Christian, had strayed from God recently because of trials in his life. Uh, while we were talking, a number of uh, warning signs came up where I was deeply concerned for his salvation. Interviews like this are always awkward, but they, they turn out good in the end, and I ended up praying with him after we turned the camera off. Do you have a bucket list? A bucket list, yes I do. What do you want to do before you die? Uh, I want to travel, you know, go see the world. Skydiving? Yeah, I'd be down for that, definitely. What do you think the last thoughts of somebody, like the last 20 seconds of someone whose parachute has got twisted, as they plummet towards the ground at 120 miles an hour, what do you think they think about? Probably death. They think, now what did I do this for? What am I giving up? I'm giving up my life, beauty, colour, birds in the morning, food, love, laughter, friends and family for what? An adrenaline rush? What are you going to do after you die? Where are you going? Uh, I believe that there is uh, the afterlife, possibly. Well, I, I definitely believe in God and believe that there's heaven. So are you going to heaven? Are you a good person? Yeah. How many lies have you told in your life? Many. Have you ever stolen something? Yeah. Ever used God's name in vain? Yes. And Jesus said, if you look at a woman and lust for her, you commit adultery with her in your heart. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust? Yes, sir. So, Colton, I'm not judging you, but you just told me you're a lying thief, a blasphemer, and an adulterer at heart. Do you still think you're a good person? Yeah. Well, how are you going to justify yourself on Judgment Day? What would you say to God that will allow you to enter heaven? Um, I would definitely say, like, there's definitely a lot of things I made mistakes, but uh, throughout my whole entire life, I believe that I definitely went in a better direction. Have you been born again? Have I been born again? Born again. Like. In John chapter 3, Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, except a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You must be born again. 2,000 years ago, God became a human being, Jesus of Nazareth. Perfect, sinless man who gave his life on the cross to take the punishment for the sin of the world. You and I broke God's law, and Jesus paid the fine. If you're in court and someone pays the fine, the judge can dismiss your case. He can say the fine's paid. He says, Colton's guilty, but someone's paid his fine, he's out of here. Well, God can dismiss your case, forgive your sins, commute your death sentence, all because of that death and resurrection of the Savior. And then he rose from the dead and defeated death. And now if you'll repent and trust in him, not trust yourself, not trust your goodness, but trust in him, God will remit your sins and grant you everlasting life. You'll be born again with a new heart, new desires. So does this make sense? Yeah, I just recently went through a pretty bad season. I felt God was definitely very far from me. So like I kind of just try to spread that love and like I, I definitely have plant seeds in a lot of them. Cause you ever take them through the Ten Commandments like Jesus did in um, Mark 10? I walked them through the Ten Commandments, but I definitely like, I think they get an urge that there is something out there. Like they even, all of them have com confessed to me just over the years of me knowing them and kind of like them just seeing my lifestyle and everything. What happens if they die tonight? Where will they go? I have no clue. That's up to God. That's not. He a... says they'll end up in hell. Makes it very clear. Scripture says that from beginning to end. If you die in your sins, you go to hell. All liars live their part in the lake of fire. No thief, no adulterer, no fornicator will inherit the kingdom of God. So if you love your friends, you've got to speak to them. You've got to share the gospel with them because it's the power of God to salvation. And do what Jesus did. Open up those commandments. Show them they're sinners like I did with you. You thought you were a good person. Suddenly you see you're not. The commandments accuse us and show us we need the Savior. You do that with your friends, and they'll say, man, I, I'm in big trouble. I need God's forgiveness. Because remember, Jesus said, lift up your eyes, look on the fields. They're white to harvest. You know, people are ready. It's just that labor is a few. You know, we think friendship evangelism is the way to go. Well, I believe in that. I befriend people, but I don't wait two years. I'll wait two minutes because they could die tonight. So there's a sense of urgency if we love people. They say, like, they're a believer, and then you start talking about God, and it's just like they kind of, like, don't want to be in that conversation. It's like kind of try to change like the topic but uh you know why that is because they're they're not truly saved yeah and the bible says men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil it's like a police officer going up and talking to a criminal but if we love them we'll have a tone of love and we say look i care about you i love you please give me five minutes you don't have to you know and if you do that you'll show your friends you really love them and the bible tells us they'll come back to you and thank you uh, if you tell them the truth. The Bible says we've got to speak the truth in love. Colton, thanks for talking to me. I'm going to give you a CD called Hell's Best Kept Secret, and I, I think you'll really enjoy it because it'll coagulate what we've talked about. Hey, thanks for talking to me. I appreciate it.